So today uh, we get to talk about a different group of plants. Uh, we get to talk about the conifers and uh, some of their specific needs uh, for pruning. So just so that you know, these are conifers, which means these are going to be some of the plants that are going to include the pines, the junipers, the cypress, uh, the cedars, uh, that tend to be more of a high altitude type uh, plants. And here you can see it on top of a mountain, very, very high. That's where you might see them. Or they're going to be very nice uh, temperate plants or so it gets cold. Uh, we are fortunate that we have some that grow well around here. Uh, but for the most part, some of the nicer ones, you will not be able to grow them uh, in Southern California because it's too hot. Uh, here's just an example of uh, some of, uh, uh, of the leaf. So be aware that in most cases, the conifers or this group of plants are going to have a needle-like uh, leaf. Uh, it's made to survive the cold. Uh, it's going to have a uh, resin inside it. That's another caution that you need to be aware of. And uh, when it's time for them to reproduce or make uh, seeds, uh, they're going to have some kind of cone-like structure uh, or not, uh, as the case of the ginkgo tree that we'll see later on. Uh, so a needle-like leaf or sometimes maybe a scale which means that you need to be very careful where long sleeves uh, to make sure that you don't get uh, stabbed or poked by some of the leaves. Uh, and here's just a close up of uh, the cone for the Italian cypress. Uh, they're gonna have needles. Uh, so here's a photograph of a typical needles. So the needles are gonna be, can be in bundles, as you can see uh, right here. Uh, and you can see a very sharp point, which means you need to be very careful with it. And or they may have somewhat of a scale, as you can see with this uh, uh, cypress with uh, the squirrel for scale right there. Uh, I mentioned the word resin. Uh, so resin, the gum uh, that is going to ooze out when the plant gets cut. Uh, it is a defense mechanism for healing some of the wounds but it's also going to be a problem for the pruning tools. And so if there was ever a time when you need to clean your pruning tools after pruning, it would be when you prune a conifer or a member of the uh, group of this uh, type of plant, because when the resin becomes dry and hard, it's going to literally gum up the pruning equipment, your tools, and then they're going to be useless. So make sure that you're aware of that and that clean your tools when, it's, when you're finished pruning. Uh, this is also the time when for the most part, uh, we are going to be looking at plants that have an excurrent uh, growth pattern. So I've shown you some you this image before. So the decurrent, a lot of the broadleaf trees will fall under this category with multiple branches. And so the excurrent, it's gonna have that single leader. So one single stem reaching through the top and uh, it's gonna then have lateral branches. This being the case of uh, the Christmas tree look. So think about a Christmas tree because those are also conifers. So uh, it's very important to know what plant you're dealing with uh, so that if it wants to be a single leader uh, excurrent uh, type plant, then you train it or fix it uh, because unfortunately many of the plants you're going to see will have had some abuse. Uh, a couple of other interesting things. Uh, so the conifers are going to be some of the most magnificent and largest tree in the world. So we have the General Sherman here as being one of the largest or most massive tree in the world. Uh, that is going to be a conifer, uh, giant sequoias. Uh, we have the giant redwoods that are going to be up north, and then we have the Jeffreys uh, 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 bristlecone pine uh, that are going to be the largest, sorry, the oldest living organisms in the world. Uh, and uh, here we have a Montezuma cypress, and there I am in blue uh, for scale. So they're going to be magnificent individuals. 
Uh, for us, you might see something like this. This is uh, the star pine. Uh, that's gonna have some something very important. So we're gonna have the leader. Uh, once again, it's an X current. So you see a beautiful stem running from the center. Uh, so that's gonna be the leader. That's gonna be the apical bud that needs to be dominant. Uh, then we have some of the side branches, which here you can see a clear uh, area where those side branches come out. Uh, then uh, the side branches is going to be in a whirl pattern. So now this is a third uh, vocabulary. We learn where plants have leaves uh, in an alternate pattern where there's just one leaf with one bud uh, on the stem. And then we also learn the opposite where there are two. Uh, leaves and two buds associated with a node. Uh, and so when we have three or more, then it is referred to as a world pattern, as you can see here with the star pine where you have uh, six or seven uh, coming out uh, from the same uh, bud or node. Uh, and then we have the internode uh, for uh, that has no leaves. So this tree clearly shows uh, us uh, all of that. And then we have the trunk or the stem of the plant. Uh, so simple vocabulary for uh, this type of trees. Uh, here's uh, some photographs from Kew Gardens. Uh, it's cold in England, so they do have uh, an opportunity to grow a lot more of this conifers. I wish we had some more of this, but we don't. What is very important uh, for the most part, and there's going to be just a few exceptions, but Keep this in mind and uh, uh, make sure that you never cut to any area where there is no green. So this is going to be a group of plants that once the stem becomes uh, rigid, once the leaf has fallen off, there are not, there will not have any dormant buds. So which means that if you do any kind of pruning where you are going to be cutting to an area that is going to be devoid of any green or any leaves, there is not going to be any growth coming out of that. And for the most part, that side of the tree will be dead or that side of the plant. So avoid cutting into old wood or avoid cutting into dead wood or where there is no green or no leaves. And that's going to happen because as the leaves on top shade uh, the interior, uh, the leaves are going to fall off and then that's going to be it. So just be aware of that so that you don't kill any of those plants. So that's going to be known as the dead zone and it's going to be inside. Uh, here is an example. Uh, this is a juniper from uh, one angle. It looks really nice. It looks full. And when we look at a different angle where there was a need to do some severe pruning uh, to clear uh, the driveway, uh, you can see uh, inside the entire interior is nothing growing in there. It's just dead. Uh, all of the growth is going to be found towards the tips. And uh, you can see where they did the severe cuts and uh, nothing is growing. Uh, just maybe a few here that they left uh, with maybe some buds, but that's about it. Everything else it's uh, completely dead. So here's an example. So we're gonna see some uh, examples of uh, the conifers that uh, you might find around here, like our arbibida. For the most part, do not really require any pruning. So this is the advantage that they are going to be well behaved. If you just let them be, they'll acquire the normal form, normal shape. It is when people may have done some damage that you might need to work and try to fix it. Uh, so here's just uh, some photograph. They do have this natural pyramidal shape uh, to them. And uh, if you want to keep that, you can just cut or prune any of uh, the branches that might be leaning out. But that's about it. It's just more of a routine uh, type pruning that you may need. Uh, be aware that a lot of these are also going to be shaped into uh, topiaries or multi poodle expect, or even uh, the world pattern here of the swirls, uh, if you see them out there. Uh, they may get big depending on uh, the individual. So here's one that has not been touched. 
Uh, and uh, here is uh, the leaf. The leaf is a scale, and there's the cones for this individual. And arborvitae, well behaved. You probably won't need to worry about it too much. Uh, here's some that have gotten to the size of a tree, so it's unusual to see them. Uh, but they're here in Long Beach if you pay attention when you're out there. And here's a few more that were planted as a street tree. And this is going to be in the west side by downtown, uh, close to downtown. Uh, so what you will see here are going to be a lot of junipers. And junipers that come from Europe and Asia that are able to survive here. Uh, this one that you see in front that I already showed you is the Hollywood Twisted Juniper uh, that can definitely grow uh, into a large specimen. So here's one that uh, it's not as big as the previous one, but it shows you the areas where they have been serious cuts. And once again, there is no green, so that branch is already dead and the interior is already devoid of any leaves, so no point in pruning that. Uh, here's uh, the leaves. Uh, so kind of needles, but not as sharp or pointy as uh, some of the others. And there's the cones also growing out of there. Uh, as you can see right here, there's the cones for this individual. Uh, here's where they've been used as a hedge, as a screen. Uh, here uh, next to a house, surrounding the house. And you can see damage here where one was cut severely. No more growth and no more growth out of those uh, old stems. And uh, just uh, as you walk, uh, look at the city, uh, you may find them. Uh, a couple of them, like the shore juniper, may be used as a ground cover. Uh, and that is also going to be a, one of the biggest problems with junipers, that many of them are going to grow eight feet wide. And if they're going to grow eight feet wide, they're going to be planted in a bed that's going to be two or three feet wide, requiring severe pruning in a very short amount of time. So if it becomes very important to look at how wide the plant grows, it's with this group of plants because they're often planted in a very, very small space. Uh, so this is supposed to be a low growing ground cover that over time it keeps getting pruned here, uh, edge, and it keeps getting higher, higher, higher. Now it's becoming a big edge. Uh, here's where they have been trained or in a box if, uh, for specimen and kind of given a poodle shape. Uh, here's uh, where they've been trained, made to look like clouds. Uh, this is in a nursery, uh, Baron Brothers Nursery. Uh, so some of the specimens being trained into some kind of weird shape, pattern form, clouds, or something like that, or even a uh, Mickey Mouse or a mouse on top. So just be aware they can lend themselves to this. Uh, uh, this is more of uh, uh, the Tam uh, juniper. Uh, here's a natural growth, so very, very mounding, uh, usually very tall. Here is uh, some larger specimens that have been planted. Uh, not, don't need too much attention. Here is uh, the creeping juniper. Uh, so juniper chinensis torulosa, uh, just easy ground cover. Uh, and here's uh, where they were placed in uh, some of the newer landscapes. Uh, here's some of the others a little bit older. Uh, again, it, it works. So if you need an area or you need a plant and have an area that it's, don't want to put a lot of money into it, just get a few of them. Uh, and uh, your set, or they are going to be very popular in a lot of the Japanese style gardens. Uh, so usually some of the uh, Japanese uh, garden, if you go to the state, it's still open, you might see a good selection of them. Uh, so here's uh, some big ones. Uh, and uh, here's some that should not have been planted uh, in the, the park way. Uh, but it's giving us a good idea. So notice all the dead uh, plant growth. So underneath, it's all dead. Uh, some of the all the branches that got cut will not regrow. And just uh, the green is going to be towards the top. Uh, so just a few feet apart. If we look at it from a different angle, uh, here's where uh, how it looks. And uh, even just across the street, we can see that it's already at the edge or even further than the edge of the walkway, which means that 
it should not be planted here. It should not be planted in an area that's gonna be eight or 10 feet wide, not uh, two or three. Uh, so don't plant it and it's gonna live a life of uh, extreme abuse and being sheer and cut the rest of its life. And there is, you can see uh, the dead material inside. So uh, we do have a few pines uh, that you should be aware of. Uh, so the pines are gonna have needles in uh, pl uh, clusters. Uh, they're called fascicle uh, or bundles uh, as there uh, will be another name. So here are just a few selections. And uh, what's important with the pine is that their growth is going to be given in what is known as candles. And you can see here the new growth uh, of uh, some of those branches. So that's important. Here's a different view uh, uh, of the candles so that if you wanted to slow down the size or the growth of the plant, during this stage when the candle is nice and young, you can cut it in half. And when you cut it in half, then you force it to branch some more and then you slow down the size or the growth of the plant. So you can cut it in different areas. So when we look at a young candle, uh, here you can see some a couple of nice things. You have the terminal bud. Actually, the terminal bud is gonna be right in the center. Those are gonna be the lateral buds three or more, so that's a whirl uh, pattern. Uh, so some of the terminal buds, you have uh, some of those lateral buds uh, that may be developing uh, right there. And then you have the needles uh, or the leaves, and then you have last year's lateral buds. So this is the current year, and uh, then it stopped, and then the next year is gonna start growing from here. And so last year it grew to here, and you see those buds that are right here have now started to grow and you see another world pattern here and that is going to repeat itself uh, as uh, the plant grows and you can see uh, an area here devoid of uh, uh, leaves, needles, do not cut uh, to this area. That would be very dangerous. So anything with needles, yes you can cut, not below. Uh, and so here is uh, where I shown you that. So here is the Japanese black pine. And once again, very popular in uh, the Japanese style gardens. So you have the needles and you have some of the different branches that were selected. And so do not cut below this black line where you would see uh, just stems or twigs and no needles because then you're gonna be killing that branch. I mentioned exceptions. This is a Canary Island pine that it will regrow back from being severely cut to dead stems or stumps. So this is the exception, not the norm. Uh, here's one and here's another one. I will no, normally you will never do this to a pine. Uh, but here's uh, some of the Canary Islands uh, out in the landscape and also some of the Italian stone pines. Italian stone pines do not grow back from old wood. And so if we look at primarily the Japanese garden. This, uh, this is the Japanese black pine. Uh, it's the one that is gonna be shaped in clouds or made into topiaries. Uh, so uh, here's just a few uh, scenes from uh, somebody's garden. So it's made to look like clouds uh, in different tiers. And here's uh, some of the images uh, from uh, uh, Long Beach State Japanese Garden. So there are specific rules for uh, pruning uh, the Japanese uh, black pine. Uh, rule number one, again, never cut to all the branches because they're gonna be killed. And you can see the beautiful pattern that has been selected here over the years. So you can select uh, which branches you're gonna keep. Uh, first, uh, rule number two is that any uh, candles need to be cut in half uh, and that is going to allow for it to remain kind of within this cloud just kind of grow up a, a little but not too much uh, and the foliage is going to be there once the branch uh, that branch or bud begins to branch out uh, the next rule is that all of the needles need to face or point towards the heavens uh, which means that you need to pluck 
literally pull every single needle that is parallel to the ground or that is facing down. So what you see here, all the ones that are facing up, that's what we want. And so it is a tedious uh, labor. It is a lot of work. You're going to get stabbed. Uh, but that is a yearly pruning of uh, the Japanese black pines uh, to make them look uh, this pretty. And so here's one that it's already in need of pruning. Uh, so you can see that is not as nice and open as this one that was just finished. Uh, and so at the end, it's gonna look like the other ones. And you can see the needles that need to be uh, kind of plucked because they're not facing toward the heavens. Uh, and uh, here's uh, an interesting uh, pattern, uh, the leaves, all of those and just the different branches, creating clouds, steps, taking you to heaven. Uh, and uh, here's just a different view uh, with a nice topiary in the background and a couple of others. Uh, so here it is uh, in some of the landscapes. Uh, again, the same uh, concepts, uh, select the branches, uh, don't cut to uh, the dead or the non-green uh, stems and uh, make sure that the needles face to the sky. So we have then uh, the Italian cypress and plant them. They usually do not require many, uh, a lot of work. Uh, here's uh, some of the ones in Long Beach. So when young, they are gonna have this uh, columnar pattern and that is actually a selection uh, for being very compact. But as they get older, they will branch out. So here's a much older Italian cypress uh, that is here in Long Beach. Uh, and uh, here's some that are being used as a screen. Uh, and here's some of the other older ones that you, you may see out there in Long Beach uh, on the west side by downtown. Uh, and uh, so you can see the nice branching pattern uh, here as well. Uh, so it's amazing. It requires very little pruning. So something that you can do routinely is that some of these branches, as you can see here, that are being pulled out uh, by the wind and by maybe people or the environment uh, out of the general uh, shape, those can be pruned. Uh, and or this one that's a little bit bigger and happier, uh, you can see where some of the branches can be headed back to just bring it back into shape. Uh, it is important that you don't do this. Uh, it's amazing the damage that people can do. And so here's where they have topped it and they have made it into a tiny ball. It's like, why would you change that into this? But it happens, people abuse plants and that is a fact and there's a different uh, angle for this. Uh, a few other uh, individuals. So we have the different podocarpus, the fern pines. These are tropical pines. And so being tropical, uh, they can afford having broader needles or broader leaves. So here are the needle-like leaves. Uh, and uh, here's just a few individuals um, that are out and about. Uh, again, needing just routine pruning. Uh, now the concept of not re-sprouting from old wood is not applicable to this because in the tropics, they can keep growing without any problem. Uh, and uh, if people may abuse them. Here's where they have made one into a tiny round disc cylinder, whatever. Uh, not good, but oh well. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, this coast redwood, native to California to the north. So they like a lot more humidity and they like uh, a lot more colder temperature. They're suffering here, but you may see them. Uh, there's really no need for pruning other than perhaps to raise them a little as they are get older, then some of these branches may come out. So it is okay to remove the lower branches to raise the canopy and for, to allow uh, for clearance. Uh, here is just one that has been left unpruned, untouched. So this is the natural growth pattern. So, so far they had no, had no need uh, to raise it. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, here's one where unfortunately they are not doing the right thing. Uh, they have decided instead of cutting the branches, 
they have created a hedge just to kind of confine it. It is normal for this tree to, or this plant to have suckers, it's the nature of the beast. Uh, and so they can remove the suckers and just lift this uh, and expose the stem. It'll look a hundred times better. Uh, but here's a close up of this individual uh, in a different view. And uh, next to it, or we have one. That is correct. So here's one that needs to be treated more like this, where you have the stem and not have that big box uh, of leaves and suckers. So once again, that's not right. Uh, it should be more like this. So clean some of the stems uh, and then you have a much nicer looking individual. Uh, here's just some that have been lifted for the clearance for the, the lawnmower. And uh, here's a, a few others just clearing so that the cars can go through uh, through there. So you can do this if necessary. Uh, the star pines that are out there, very little pruning. Unfortunately, many of them get hacked or cut in half uh, because uh, people never plan on having one. It is often purchased as a living Christmas tree and then it gets put in the ground and then they realize it gets too big. So here it is, one that has been treated kindly and it looks very nice and that is an Italian cypress. Uh, here's uh, in uh, the Eldorado Library, another one that looks kind of nice. And just a few more, as you may see them in the skylines, including our monkey puzzle uh, that is right here, kind of being treated very kindly and looking very nice. Again, very little to no pruning uh, necessary. And uh, what you may see out there is going to be more of uh, something like this, which is a weeping cedar. And uh, these are selections. Uh, they are used to create forms and shapes. And so instead of going up, it's just going to grow down and it kind of has this weeping appearance. They are very expensive, uh, but this is the weeping blue atlas cedar that you may see in the landscape. Uh, here it is uh, being used in uh, some of the, uh, in the landscape with uh, other uh, junipers being used to cover through the rocks and a pine. So again, usually requiring very little help or pruning, uh, they kind of look good. Uh, and just a few photographs of uh, some of the other individuals, including some of uh, the topiaries and the individual shapes that you may see. Uh, so the multi poodle and then uh, the uh, swirls and uh, a lot of those will come from Monrovia nursery. Uh, so you normally don't train them at home unless you are going to be spending a lot of time. So most of this have uh, been over 15 years in the container and they're slow growing. Uh, and uh, they get selected, they start selecting the branches and once that happens, then it's a routine, either biannual or annual pruning and shaping and shearing and doing a lot of work. Uh, so here's Monrovia Nursery. I had the opportunity to be there uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and so this is what you might find in a nursery and this is what people plant. Once it begins in this shape, it needs to be in this shape. So once you see this pruning, that needs to continue, which is, uh, Unfortunately that when people buy them, they don't start a pruning cycle uh, right away and then they lose the form and the shape and to bring it back, it's gonna be very difficult. So be aware of that. Uh, some of the instant cedar, another native individual here. Uh, again, very little pruning just to shape and lift. Uh, that's gonna be all that is necessary for uh, this individual. And or the ginkgo tree, it is a conifer. It belongs in this category. Uh, you can keep it small, you can shape it, you can train it, you can do many things. Or here you can see where they have uh, done some work. Uh, I would have taken that big branch out of there, but that's me. Uh, but here's uh, where it has a really nice skeleton. Uh, or you can think about how to fix them because if the plant wants to be excurrent, meaning having a single stem and somebody tops it, then you're gonna have all the lateral buds that are gonna compete. So this is the opportunity to shape it back into a natural form 
then you can take several steps. Uh, first of all, you can choose uh, the center most individual uh, and then head back the laterals, as you can see here, so that this is going to be the topmost uh, individual and that's going to now resume uh, that excurrent growth pattern. Or if there are no real new growth, uh, or uh, you can select it. So here is where uh, there was the cut and there's some lateral branches where you can then angle it, tie it, shape it. Over time, this will become the new leader. And so by this being the top, that will become the dominant individual. So you can fix it if there has experience, if the plant has experienced a problem. Uh, and uh, here is uh, our Japanese black pine uh, in the old days. So that would have been our test subject uh, that we would have practiced on. So with that and no photograph of the garden, I will uh, say goodbye.